I grew up on the coast. We lived all over Oregon, but I've just been around wild product in my whole life. Growing up on salmon, trout, a lot of ocean fish as well. When I started working in restaurants, even high level ones, I was kind of disappointed in the quality of certain products. A lot of people just don't even know what the potential for these products are. This is the butter clam. We're really trying to showcase this ingredient because we think that it's a world-class quality of clam. It hasn't really caught on at all yet as far as food grade goes. You are able to dig them in safer areas and stuff, but it's a tremendous amount of work for a small yield. So any sort of harvest that is gonna have a really fruitful amount has to be done by diver harvest. And the highest population density of these clams exists in Tillamook Bay. Here in Tillamook Bay, they're native, high population, really delicious, but just haven't really been in the market or haven't been introduced to the market. So we're trying to work with fishermen like Brad to help introduce these to other chefs and popularize the ingredient. We'll probably get a few butter clams. Uh, but man, I just want to show you the ecosystem. I don't know if you know much about clams and how they live on the substrate, but on the surface you have the cockle clam, which can actually move throughout the bay. They hop on their tongues. Um, below them you have the butter clam, about eight inches down. And then uh, about a foot to about two feet down you have the horse neck clam. Well, I think the butter clam is Definitely one of the best eating clams in the world, especially for eating raw. It's so unique to this bay. Uh, they're actually found from Alaska to Northern California, but these ones specifically are just such a higher quality than any other ones that we've had from other states or other areas because of the ecosystem that they're, they're found in. When you go down there, there's probably 10 generations of giant clams that have bred and died off. So a lot of times you see shells, and people worry about the shells when actually it's the opposite. The shells are the one thing that's keeping this the mecca for clams on the west coast. Right. The number one issue I see with new divers is, is equalizing. As they go down, knowing that every inch is a different pressure change. And the first four feet is where most of the pressure change happens. So learning to equalize, uh, you should always feel comfortable the whole way down. So we got about 65 pounds for you. If you don't protect your hands or your knees, um, you will shred through your stuff in, in one day. Um, especially on a strong current because you're trying to hold your position. And there's so many clams. I'm talking, you got the shells, but in the shells you have thousands upon thousands of pounds. That all it takes is one, one knee or one shell fragment and it'll sh shred your gloves. First time that we ever went down and dived, uh, yeah, it's definitely really nerve wracking to deal with uh, different tides, pretty murky, the current's really strong. You're constantly going in and out of these really dangerous ranges for your ears and sinuses because of having to equalize back and forth between the depths. Sport boats riding right over the top of you while you're diving. We wear a 65 to 100 pound weight vest and it gets you right down to the bottom. The air tank is hooked up to a compressor on the boat, connected to hoses instead of air tanks, constantly getting tangled up. So yeah, it was terrifying the first time, to be completely honest. As far as what's going through your mind, like one step down the ladder at a time, and then you kind of like get comfortable, and you just try to go as slow as you can going down. Because you have to go down slowly. Um, if you just go straight down to the bottom, you blow your eardrums out. So once you get your feet on the ocean floor, it's definitely a very relieving feeling. Because it is kind of just like dropping into a really fast moving river. The butter clam is the six to 10 inches down underneath the sand. So to access those or any of the clams, you uh, basically brush, start brushing away the sand and the shells to expose the clam. So you want a tide that's outgoing so that the current will take the sand away and then it creates visibility for to see what's left underneath. Once the sand clears, you see millions of clams, like a, a number that you couldn't even count. Just a really good feeling to be able to see firsthand 
the uh, health of the ecosystem and the massive population of these clams and um, it really makes you feel good about being able to harvest them and introduce them as a, as a new item in the market. It's rare to have an opportunity to be that connected to the process of gathering your food. As far as finding these clams, you can't find them anywhere else. Well, that was great. It was good to take you guys down. Uh, awesome. We'll load a, bring a bag up right now. Once you, once you start eating them, you're like, how is this not a thing that's, that people eat, like in restaurants here? So we just learned essentially by trial and error after deciding that we wanted to work with these, the best ways to prepare them. Uh, we shuck these clams live. Uh, we don't do anything to them previous. They're not steamed or blanched or anything. So we get right in there. First muscle off, we just follow the line of the shell so we don't cut into the clam. We go right back the other way along the skirt, kind of follow the line of the shell once again here, free that other abductor muscle. So there we have the clam, remove the top shell, and then the abductors are gonna come back on the other side, free them from the base, just like an oyster. And you can see those two nice big abductor muscles. By far my favorite part of the butter clam. It's extremely firm and crunchy, has the texture of like a very fresh scallop, um, really clean flavor. Um, it's the best part of the clam for eating raw. So this butter clam is a red meat clam and it has to do with the ecosystem that they're living in and what they're filtering, what type of sand and rock and, and also what type of microalgae that they're eating. That microalgae also adds a lot to the flavor of the clam. The next uh, move here is to break down each piece of the clam. The abductor muscles will pop right out. Beautiful. And they're huge. You're already getting two pieces of meat that are that big and it's a very small portion of the actual clam itself. The skirt of the clam is this next part. This is what helps seal the shell. So we just split that into two different strips. So then for this next part, we have the mantle. This is the um, stomach of the clam, which is not a part that we use for eating raw. Um, but this part along the edge is something that we do use. So we just basically follow that line where the color difference is and remove that. The last part that we remove from the stomach of the clam is the siphon, what the clam uses to filter water in and out. One tube pulls it in and it uh, processes through the stomach of the clam and all microalgae and small different things that the clam can eat are um, filtered through the stomach and then the pure bay water is put back out. So they're extremely important part of the bay because they filter everything. And we're gonna serve um, all the different edible parts of this here, our abductor, our clam skirt, our mantle, and then last is the siphon. So as you can see, this siphon just looks exactly like a really tiny gooey duck. Well, I think we wanted to serve them as naturally as possible in their natural form, minimalist garnish, and in their own shells. So it sort of just kind of took place from trying to keep it as um, original as possible, kind of took its own uh, form. So this accompaniment for this clam is a Ava Bruma winter melon from Ayers Creek Farm in Gaston, Oregon. And it's an Italian varietal of melon that uh, it's not grown in winter, but they call it winter melon because it's a storage melon. And you use it in winter after it's been sitting on the shelf for several months. And so this juice is fermented liquid from the melon. So it's just, you know, added 2% salt to the melon juice and then we, um, let it ferment at room temperature with kelp in it. So it's like a kimchi basically, but a white kimchi. And this rind is uh, stored in brine. Um, it does uh, develop flavor over time. Nothing too assertive. It's just more of a textural component. We really like liken the flavor of this uh, clam to melon. So that's why we serve it with this because it just is a nice accent to the flavor. Doesn't compete with it, just elevates it.
and uh, balances it as well. And more of that olive oil. It's extremely dangerous and it's really hard work, but um, it's definitely worth it.